Hey everyone, welcome to part seven of our series on making a Vue.js app. Today is going to be a little bit shorter, but it's gonna be action packed. So in the first section, we're gonna be validating individual inputs. Then in the section after that, we're gonna be validating entire forms and doing stuff like uh, not allowing people to submit the form unless it's valid. And then we're gonna refactor all that to an edit form component so we can use it in both our edit and our create pages. So let's go ahead and take a look at the issue. So here we have a video that doesn't have a name or a description. And we see if we go in and edit, we can take out the thumbnail and video URL as well. And we'll have just a completely blank video. That's not good. We want to prevent people from making invalid videos. So we'll want to guarantee that there's a name, a description, and some sort of URL on the thumbnail and video. We won't check now whether they're valid, but we do want to check that something is there. In terms of validation libraries, there are two big players that I can tell in the view space. So there's Vulidate, which is a model-based validation, and there's vValidate, which is a template-based validation framework. And both these look to be pretty well-made and are fairly popular. But for today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit simpler because we already have Vutify installed. We'll just be using their rules array. And later on, you can actually integrate this with either Vulidate or vValidate if you want, and thus use their rules. But for today, we're gonna to be creating our own rules and then using Vutify in order to display the errors. So the rules are going to be an array. And so let's go ahead and just do a one item array to start. And we'll say it is require name. In the Vutify documentation, it says to put this in the data. So we could put require name here. And then we'll make this a function. And V is going to be the model that's passed in. And so that'll be the name. And so if V and V.length is greater than zero, then it passes. Otherwise, we're gonna say, you must input a name. Let's see this in action by removing the name. Okay, so I completely removed the text, so the length is equal to zero, and therefore it displays this error. And the styling is really nice, everything's red. Uh, All right, so this first validation is working nicely. Let's make a validation for the description. So we'll have this one say require description, and then we'll make that in our data. Actually, we can copy paste most of this. And of course, when you copy paste, that's usually a sign that you can uh, abstract things later, which we'll be doing soon. But first, all right, so that works. And notice this does not display until you click in it and then tab out. So that's nice if, let's say, first let's save these as blank and then so it's not showing these as errors until we go there. And that's nice if you're in a new form. You don't just see a sea of red the second you enter. All right, so we've got our two rules, require name and require description. And we could keep on making a new one for each uh, input, but it would be much better if we could just do a generic require. To do that, we're gonna need to turn this into a function and it will take the property type and this will uh, actually be like this and then we'll be returning 
this function. And uh, we're going to make this generic here. Then we'll go ahead and change this here. So it's feeding in name as the property type. And we'll give this a try. And it's almost working, except it says it can't resolve name. That's because require is a word that JavaScript has uh, reserved for itself. So we'll use required with a D. And now it works. Let's go ahead and use that for description as well. And we can delete require description with a D. All right, now we have a generic rule. We can go ahead and throw that on our other two properties because we know that it'll need it. And we'll just change out what we say. And it should be working. So this is good progress. We're making it so that we can't have any blank fields. But sometimes you want to have something that's more descriptive. So let's say, is this a good name? Uh, not really. And something this long, even if it was with words that made sense, would also not be a good name either because it's too long and it won't work with our styling. So we want to have a minimum length and a max length. We'll start with a minimum length. And so min length and we'll make that minimum length five. So we need to create the min length uh, rule and we'll also feed in the property type so we can have a better error message. So property type and then min length. And we'll do our check. So first we check that it's there and then if the length is less than or greater than or equal to the min length, then it'll pass. Otherwise, we'll have an error message. We'll say that property type must be at least min length characters. Let's see this in action. So it says you must input a name if we do nothing. And if we put in one character, it says the name must be at least five characters. Okay, so this is working really nicely. Let's add min length to the description and with a couple modifications. So of course the property type is description and then it'll be a minimum length of 20. And also I just noticed the scrolling we're doing here. That's not good. Let's go ahead and put these inputs on separate lines so they're more manageable. I like having one-liners, but when you get to something large enough that you have to scroll, it's good to put it on multiple lines. And this one, we don't have to scroll yet, but everything else is on multiple lines. So we want it to fit in. All right, now it's time to make our last validation of the day. So we'll make max length, and once again, we'll feed it a property type and then give it a maximum length. And I think 50 is good, but for ease of demonstration, we'll do 20. And actually, most of this can be copied from min length. We will just reverse these and change this and must be at least, must be less than max length characters. All right, and this should already be working. So let's go ahead and, okay, so we've triggered it. 
So this is good that it's working, but the user interface could be better because we don't really know, okay, that's 20 characters and that's that. So that's kind of hard for people to plan around. And when they first run into it, it can be a bit of a surprise. Fortunately, Vutify has something that can help us with that. So we will use the counter and we'll set it to 20. And what that's gonna do is gonna show us over here how many characters we have and our max. So as you can see, it's counting it up. And that gives people an idea of how many characters they have left. So it's not a surprise and they can plan better. This counter is also useful even when there's not a max length. So we'll set counter equal to true. And here you can see it's counting up the number of characters here. And it doesn't have an out of 20 because there's no maximum. All right, so we've created our three rules and then applied them to our various fields. We're doing great so far. And let's go ahead and make that 50 so it's more realistic. But there is a problem. When we hit save video, it still works. So we need a way to let the form know what's happening with the validations. So we've got a problem. We've got all these cool validations, but if the user ignores them, then you know, they ignore them and they can still save their video. We want a way to disable this button if these things are invalid. Fortunately, Vutify has our back. And the fix is surprisingly easy. So first we'll wrap this all in a V form. And if we go back to our form, nothing's changed, uh, no styling changes, and everything still works like it used to. And we can still save our video when there are errors. The magic is when we connect it with all of the text fields and text areas within the form. So we use V model and we'll have the valid property. And here we'll just return valid and we'll start valid as false. And basically it says that if any of this stuff in here is invalid, then valid will be false. Otherwise it'll be true. Let's connect that to our save video button. So we'll connect it to the disabled property and we'll have it disabled if the validations are not valid. So here we've already got it disabled. That's nice. And then our description. And then we'll go ahead and add a thumbnail URL. And there we go, now the button is enabled. And if we make this invalid, it'll be disabled again. Cool, let's save that video. And that's really all there is to it. So we wrap everything that we want covered in a V form, and then we attach the V model to a property. And this property has a default of false and then we go ahead and connect this to the disabled uh, property of the button. All right, good stuff. We've got all this working. Now it's time to copy and paste everything from here and put it into the video create page. And then whenever we change something, remember to fix it in both places. Or we could abstract it into an edit form component. Let's do that. Our edit form, we're gonna want it to be working in the edit page and the create video page. And so there's gonna be three steps to how we're creating this. First, we're gonna create it and copy paste in the code that we want. 
Then we're gonna make it work in the edit page. And then we're going to abstract it and make it work in the create page. Let's get started. All right, first we're going to make our component and we're gonna call it video edit form. And in there we're going to get our base stuff and then go ahead and copy in the entire form. Cool, and we don't need this default div since vform can be our base. All right, now let's get what they need. So we're gonna be needing this data. And more importantly, it won't be needed in the admin video edit page. So we'll just copy that and paste that there. What else will we need? So we'll need the video. And that's something that I think should be fed in because we know that the video for the edit will be different than the video for the create. And so let's go ahead and import our component. And it's the video edit form. And then we'll go ahead and put it in our components hash as well. All right, so now it's available and we'll use it here. And we'll go ahead and feed in our video. Let's see if this runs. And it does not. And the reason is that the property method video is not defined on the instance but referenced during render. So we need to, quote, define it on the instance. And what that means is putting it as a prop. So props, and we will start off with video. And now it's working. All right, so uh, it's not just video that we'll need to feed in. The save video method is gonna be different between the edit and create pages. So let's feed that in as well as a prop. And while we're there, this button will probably want to say something different as well. So we'll make it button text, which we also feed in via prop. So here, let's go ahead and add those. Save video is equal to save video. And then button text is equal to the text save video and this appears to all be working. Let's go ahead and check. Our validations are still working. And then we'll check that it actually saves. And it did. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and add that to our create video page. So as you can see here, there are no validations as of yet. We'll go to our video create page and we'll start by importing our video edit form. And then we will add that to our components list. And then we'll go ahead and replace all of this with our video edit form. And we will feed in, of course, our video. And then we'll feed in save video. And here we've called it create video, that makes sense. And we'll go ahead and put that for our button text as well. Create video. And I forgot to close this out. Okay, now we can see we've got our counters and we have our validations. And this is disabled until we have everything valid. Awesome. And there's a little error here. You have to make that go away in order to click this because uh, it changes where it is dynamically. 
And this was not a problem on the edit page because this was only one line and it stretched far out. So what we can do is we can go to our edit form. I'm sure there is a better way to do this, but we can put it in the next to last field instead of the last field. And what that does is when it reloads, it makes it so when you tab out, the size will already have changed. So it's really only right after it changes that it's the issue. So here you can just click create video afterwards if you have everything else. So here we tab out, hit create, or even we don't have to tab out, we hit create video and it works. And that's all it took to put our video edit form into video create. Honestly, the hardest part was making sure our little bug with the video URL hint didn't make it more difficult to click the submit button. Everything else went real smooth. And that is the basics of validations. Let's review what we learned. First, we learned about the rules option on the Vutify text field. And so that takes an array of rules. And we created our three rules, required, min length, and max length. Each of those rules is a function and they return either true, which means that the validation passes, or they return a string, which means the validation failed. And that string is what's displayed to the user. So we can create multiple of these rules and stack them up like this, and it will always display the first rule that fails. Additionally, you can use the counter. And so if you feed a counter with a number, then it will show you how many out of that you're typing and turn red when you get over it. Make sure that the number you feed counter and the number you feed max length is the same. If you just put counter equals true, then it'll do a counter without saying how many characters it's out of. So it'll just be one number instead of like 23 out of 50. Finally, we learned how to tie this all together and make it so all these validations work together to keep you from making mistakes. We do that by wrapping everything in a V form and attaching V model to a property. And we're using that property to disable the save button. And that's the end. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you learned as much as I did. Uh, be sure to join me next time when we're going to talk about, we're finally doing it, we're doing authentication.